we do have some good ranged units. And maybe we're going to be able to deal some significant damage, at least to the front line of the defense. And then we'll be able to send our units in and see what we can do about that. Hello reformers and welcome back to the bones of Rangvald and well as you can see here we've arrived at Riverton and our rather morbid task is to slaughter everyone here and so yeah as you can see attack the village now I don't exactly know uh, yeah I was actually thinking to myself let's recruit some people before slaughtering the rest of them yes but that apparently is not going to work. Anyway, let's attack the village and see what happens. I don't exactly know whether we'll be able to even pull this off. I mean, I assume... Wow. Yeah, I assume there's going to be a huge amount of enemies here. And uh, that kind of makes me think maybe I should just, uh, you know, stay over this side of the bridge and maybe use it as a bit of a bottleneck. I literally have 13 units on the battlefield and I very much hope most of these fellows that we have at our disposal here are going to be immune to damage basically but we're gonna go and fight through the farmers and hopefully get to the other side of the bridge and then maybe we'll have to pull back or something along those lines but you can see here that I don't think these farmers are going to be able to do too much I don't think they're going to be able to penetrate our armor or indeed actually be able to do any damage to us whatsoever. Ah, that fellow, however, might pose a bit of a threat. One of those lost knights. So we do have to be a bit careful about them. I don't exactly know whether he has any friends, but hopefully we'll kill them just as easily. Let's do it. Yes, there is actually an archer here as well, a village guard, nothing to worry about there. Yes. All right, so, yep, that was it. That was it. I actually thought to myself that I might be in a bit of trouble there, but no. We seem fine. We seem absolutely fine. Alright, so there you go. That was easy enough. Ten renown only. I was actually hoping for maybe a little bit more than that, but obviously we are not really against the highest tier units ever, so that is to be expected. Anyway, the villagers here are few and frightened, and they quickly scatter and run before you. The village is at your mercy. The elder begins to beg. Let's see what he has to... Ah, oh, there we go. That's, that's actually really cool, actually, how they uh, change the scene now. Stop, stop the bloodshed. Do you not see? You're slaying innocent men and women. Do not try to fool me, old man. I know whom I kill. Yes, I'm pretty sure that mysterious figure was lying to us, but we'll see. No, you do not. You slain good people, people I regarded as family. Please, see sense. You've been tricked into working for the Hernar. Yeah, there you go. Elaborate, please, before I cut off your limbs as well. There's no need for that. There's no need for that barbarity. My character? Uh, yes, oh, well, anyway. Heard our men have terrorized our village, raped our women, and destroyed all artifacts of our former prosperity. We once welcomed, welcomed them with open arms as friends, and this is what we got for our generosity. We once... Uh, uh, oh, okay, yes, we once welcomed them again. <laughs> but as soon as Rangval descended, the foreigners one by one turned bad, dealing as much damage to each of us as possible until we were lucky enough to drive out the spies with steel and fire. Our defensiveness has specified the Hernar's ancient grudge against southerners unto us, and I suppose your evil actions have made of us an example. The man who sent you is a Hernar agent. One of our good militia men was tailing the agent in that town that... Uh, this person uh, that I'm not able to to say, anyway, when he gave you the mission to kill Rodrigo. Rodrigo was a well-known merchant for his trading across the lines of supposed enemies, all except the Hernar. His skill at gaining the goodwill of all the free kingdoms in Irun was seen as a threat to the Hernar, and so they took notice. We in Riverton were trying to recruit Rodrigo to the Haugen. The Hernar were trying to kill him before that could happen. The Haugen? The only men who are aware of the danger of the Hernar invasion. 
The petty kings and lords squabble amongst themselves, ignoring the true hate the North has for us, or even opportunistically viewing them as allies. The Halcon are a squadron of lordless knights, originally formed in the ancient times of Rangvald's original invasion, who see the true danger, and dedicate themselves to fighting off the Hernar hordes. We provided the Halcon assistance, supplies, and our best young men would join their ranks, but no longer. I must protect my people first, and working for the good of Arun is too dangerous now. If you truly wish to make amends for your evil deed, you must seek out and serve the Haugen. Okay, how about telling me where they are, so you don't leave me on a wild goose chase? How about we say, uh, yeah, I'm really sorry about actually slaughtering everyone around you, and, uh, yeah, all your family, and, yes, we should probably say that. Anyway, no, you burnt my village and decimated my people at the behest of savages. I will not betray Arun's last hope for you. No, you will have to find them for yourself. All right, so, <laughs> so we can't, we can't intimidate him or persuade him in any way because again, we, you know, we we have, as I said, slaughtered everyone close to him, which is not great. Not great for him, but we're we're fine, obviously. Anyway, that uh, that appears to be the end. That appears to be the end of the main story for now. Bear that in mind. This is just the alpha. It's very early on in its development, and uh, I'm going to be looking forward to seeing what actually happens next. But for the rest of this special feature, we're going to take a look at some of the other factions' units, because obviously there is no troop tree right now. Maybe later down the line in development, there will be a troop tree, and we'll be able to look at the troops easily f through that. But we have 61 spaces, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go to every single, well, as many of the kingdoms as I can get my hands on, and we'll try and recruit as many people as possible, and then we'll see what kind of units they have to offer. Alright, so I've done a little bit of recruiting from the various factions, and we are now ready to take a look at some of the more advanced units from those factions in just a second as you can see here this is the end of the story demo you can continue to play in sandbox mode and as you can see we are now up here and uh, yeah there's, uh, there's actually a very good reason why we're here and that is because I would like to be able to interact with some of the Hernar units and uh, I actually was unaware that we were at war technically or well should we say aggressive towards a particular faction here and obviously the Hernar are the ones that are being you know pretty much the antagonists of the story here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and try and do a siege and we'll see what the sieges are like and we'll do maybe a field battle as well if I can get my hands on one of their vassals but first we're gonna take a look at some of the units that I've been able to acquire here. So as you can see, these are the Erskine, 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 yeah, I guess. And uh, these guys are from this faction down here, the uh, the green guys, yeah. And uh, they've got a pretty, pretty large, pretty large, you know, little section of territory here. And uh, that means that you're gonna be able to recruit a whole bunch from them. And that's, that's nice, I like that quite a bit. And uh, as you can see here, the infantry will go into Armored Warriors. Let's take a look quickly at their stats. As you can see, 74 HP. Wow, huge amount of Power Strike, Iron Flesh, Shield, Athletics. All proficiencies, pretty fantastic. So they're, they're very, very formidable. However, it doesn't... It, it looks like they may not spawn with a sword that much. As you can see, that fellow that I'm speaking to right here, he doesn't have a shield on his back, so it seems like his shall we say, preferred weapon is probably going to be a two-handed, so he might be a little bit difficult to use in a siege. Then we do have two branches of ranged units. You can either level them up into marksmen, which obviously, as you can plainly see, they use a longbow, and uh, yeah, then you can obviously level them up into the crossbow variant, and uh, as you can see, not, not as great, you know, not as great as the infantry, so the infantry are obviously very much amazing at the moment and then we have sharpshooters here I think they'll probably yeah they have about the same stats and uh, the the difference is literally just them using a sniper crossbow or using the other weapon which I actually don't know what it's called so we should probably just take a quick look at it it's a longbow yeah it is actually a longbow like I thought okay yeah I thought there might be just like a special kind of stat or something that it had associated with it but no the, I, I personally feel like 
the sniper crossbow is probably going to be much more effective, but if you want higher DPS, then I guess the marksman are the way to go. Anyway, let's move on. We are now going to take a look at the Swan Guard faction. Now these guys are the dark blue. The Kingdom of Swan Guard, as you can see, they don't have a very large territory here, a couple of villages, so you should be able to get a decent amount of volunteers from there. And obviously not as not as large as the, uh, well, Aphelius Dominion, of course, and not as, certainly not as large. Whoa, this is actually a very large faction, the Aphelius Dominion. They're basically based on Romans. So, yeah, if you want, if you want Roman units, then, uh, well, they have you covered. They certainly do have you covered because they have Aginum units and they also have Aphelius units and they're both based on Romans. So, yeah, we're going to take a look at those in just a second. But anyway, we're taking a look at the Dark Blue Faction right now. These guys are your bread and butter standard sort of shield bearers as far as I can see. Yeah, they have pretty awesome stats. Not as good, not as good stats as the previous fellows. But bear in mind that those guys, they might be using two-handed. So they might be a little bit less reliable, shall we say. Anyway, these are the ranged units that you're going to get with Swan Guard. Actually... I'd say a little bit better than the ones we, we previously saw, but hmm, the proficiencies are obviously a little bit better. I think their, uh, their offensive abilities would probably be a lot better, but maybe not anything else. Anyway, they do have cavalry. These fellows actually do have cavalry, so let's take a look at them. 70 HP, 300 proficiencies in everything, 8 in power strike, 8 in iron flesh. Decent enough. Decent enough. Nine in riding skill. Pretty awesome. They also come with shields, so they can be used effectively in sieges or if they get dismounted at some point. Anyway, let's take a look at the first Romans. First Roman faction here, Aphilius Warriors. These are obviously the highest tier you're going to get with the infantry. They have decent enough proficiencies. Their power throw obviously is going to come into it here because they're probably going to use thrown weapons of some sort. And otherwise, they have kind of standard, maybe a little bit below average stats. So, mm, I'm not entirely sure about that. They do have tridents that they come with. And as you can see, if they're able to hit you with this, 65 piercing damage is going to be probably the last thing you see. Because that's a lot of damage. That is certainly a lot of damage. Anyway, so that's the, that's the infantry right there. Let's take a look at their ranged units. Okay, so they're... Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. So if you want ranged units, I think this is probably where you're going to have to come because 370 archery proficiency is, I think, the highest proficiency we've seen so far. However, their power draw is much less than that of the marksmen of the previous faction, the Swan Guard Rangers. They are much, much less in terms of power draw. They're three, three points less in actual fact. So that's... That's kind of harsh. Otherwise, we do have the Aphilius Cataphract here, which is their answer to the cavalry. They have less HP, but they have more proficiencies. So it seems like they might be a little bit more in the way of offensive cavalry, similar to how the Saranid Mamluks are in comparison to the Swadian Knights. Because Swadian Knights in native they're generally much more defensive than the Saranid Mamluks because the Mamluks do come with lances most of the time. I know Swedian Knights do as well, but they also come with a two-handed hammer slash mace. And uh, yeah, that is used quite a bit as well. Anyway, let's move on to the next Roman faction, which is the Aginum faction. They come with armored snipers. Now these guys are pretty, yeah, I'd say these are also a very, very good option here because you can see they come with some heavy duty shields. Their armor is also extremely heavy duty and should be able to protect them from most things. And their proficiency is 310, which is nothing to sniff at. It's only 60 less than the longbow variant of their units. Well, technically the Aphilius is the is the longbow variant kind of it's not even a longbow it's kind of a short bow i'd guess they, they, that they're using but anyway so there's the armored snipers then you have gladiators here now i think these guys are probably going to be not that good oh no never mind never mind they are actually pretty good but you can see here that their attributes are a kind of a little bit low they do have 61 hp good amount of power strike their power throw is absolutely insane so i assume that they're probably going to be using yeah they're going to be using these fantastic throne weapons and these things are going to hurt because 8 in power throw is really going to make sure that 
whoever they're getting thrown at is going to be murdered very, very quickly. Anyway, the last unit that we have to look at is, of course, their answer to the cavalry. And uh, it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. I mean, 9 in riding, 7 in athletics, 7 in shield, power strike, iron flesh, all that good stuff. Yeah, pretty happy with that. They only come with a one-handed weapon and a shield, so you don't have to worry about them equipping a two-handed at some random point or running around with a lance in a field battle and making fools of themselves. So they're going to be pretty reliable, I guess. So I'd say that some of the Roman units are pretty good. I wouldn't say that you should maybe use all Roman units, but that's obviously just up to you, you know? You, that's, the, that's the great thing about sandbox games in general. You can just play however you want. Anyway, let's do this. Let's go in against the Hernar Empire and see what we can do. We have 53 against 23. I actually have no idea what kind of... Oh, hello. Okay, so apparently he's uh, spawned extremely close to us. I guess I'm just going to tell everyone to charge in. I was thinking that we'd be a lot further away from him, but okay. And uh, we're going to get to see a little bit more about the Hernar and their units. They seem to they seem to be a little bit based on Nords. I mean, obviously this is kind of a Viking mod in general because you know bones of Rangvald. You know, it's kind of kind of in the name. But it does obviously incorporate a whole bunch of other different cultures as well. Romans, for example, and, and things like that. So, yeah, it is seemingly that the Hernar are definitely Nord-type units, I guess. But you can see here that they also use skeletal units, which can only make me wonder that there must be some kind of magic at play here, perhaps. Anyway, let's just take that guy prisoner. As you can see here, the Hernar Empire is literally hating us like nothing else. They are at minus 100 relation. And, uh, well, I guess I wouldn't expect any less. So, we've just defeated and indeed captured Mr. Nelag here. And so, I'm actually going to insult him even further by taking his castle. So, let's do this. I don't have any engineering skill, but thankfully this is a ladder castle. So, we should have this done in a jiffy, hopefully. Yeah. Maybe? Yeah, there we go. That was pretty quick. Alright, so I'm using a two-handed here. Most of my units, indeed my, my infantry, are using two-handed as well, so this might not work out too well. But I do have a whole bunch of archers, as you can see here. 23 archers to my name. So this should theoretically be pretty good, I guess? I'm actually going to just wait and tell my cavalry and infantry just to stand back here for a second because we do have some good ranged units and maybe we're going to be able to deal some significant damage at least to the front line of the defense and then we'll be able to send our units in and see what we can do about that. But at the moment, I, I mean, I don't have any ranged units, uh, any ranged units, any ranged weapons myself, so it is going to be maybe a little bit Actually, these guys are pretty low tier. I think we might actually just be able to go in here and just win outright. Let's just try it. I mean, this guy is obviously going to be a bit difficult. Ow. Getting hit in the face is obviously difficult as well. There we go. There we go. Come on now. Yes. Yes. Okay, so some of them are going to be pretty tricky. Because, you know, those guys are... Ancient Hernar Archers. How good are how good are they? Whoa, okay. I actually got hit for 25 damage right there. That guy means business. These guys mean business too. I've got to be a bit careful about this. Okay, come on. Let's just try and eliminate that fellow first. Okay. Nope. Oh, that was close. That was really, really close. Okay, now don't get shot. There we are. Now if I could just... Wow, they actually do some decent damage. I don't even have that much HP, which is a big, big problem in my opinion. So, I think in general, if I am going to level up, which I think I have, I probably need a little bit of... I do have some in Iron Flesh, don't I? I think I do, but it seems like my HP just dwindles extremely quickly. Anyway, as you can see, we have already absolutely murdered everyone on the battlements here. And uh, I'm a bit worried about getting killed. So I'm not entirely sure what's going to happen with that, but, uh, well, you can see here that we are absolutely winning the day. But it depends whether we're going to win c 
completely, or whether we're just going to show ourselves to be relatively strong and then fail at the last jump, so to speak. But let's see if we can actually make it happen. Can we make it happen? That's the thing. Hmm, I think we can. Yep, there's only there's only 10 left. Wow, that's pretty amazing. But we did lose 10 units, so yeah. It's just unfortunate that they don't have any prisoners in here for me to be able to take them. And uh, yeah, that seems to be it. Yep, there they go. All falling over there. And there seems to be a whole bunch of... Ah, yes. Okay, so this is one of those castles that is actually a really good layout for archers if you have obviously the right archers. Oh, there we go. Okay, apparently I didn't even need to run around here because my archers were able to absolutely murder his. So that's pretty good. Anyway, 16 renowned for that. Not bad. And we did kill 130 enemies. And we're now done. There we go. That was that was actually pretty cool. Whoa, a noble bow. And we also gained ancient Hernar axes. Is that actually any good? I guess. I guess I'll, I'll try it out. The weapon reach is pretty awful. So that's, that's probably the reason why we may not want to use it. But anyway, the bow seems actually pretty fun. It's a long bow. You can't use it on horseback, but it has an, an accuracy of 99, damage 25. Pretty awesome. Anyway, it does require power draw 4. If I do find a companion that actually has some bow skill, then I guess that would be the way to go. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm just going to give this to myself. Why not? And uh, there's no actual need for me to plunder this. So we're just going to appoint people and uh, <laughs> I, I'm i so bad. I'm so bad at, at coming up with names. So I'm just going to go with an old school name. And there you go. Nice. Uh, do I want to change domestic policy? I guess I, I, guess I could. Yeah, I, I kind of like to go around here. Actually, it usually serves. Let's go for very high quality and, uh, you know, a little bit less mercantilism is fine with me. All right. Ah, we do actually have someone attempting to raid us, but you... Are you serious? Yeah, okay, so some of these vassals, they, they surely are very, very weak. And uh, I guess we'll be taking this guy out. And uh, we'll see what we can do about uh, not dying as well, because I'm actually extremely low in HP when uh, entering this battle. So let's be a bit cautious. But I'm, uh, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing where this mod goes in terms of its story development because, in general, I am a huge fan of story-based mods. And, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, it's a sandbox game, so you're not really going to, you know, have a super scripted experience. But whenever it is kind of like that, one of my favorite mods of all time, if not my favorite mod of all time, is very very scripted in in that sense and is a is a story driven mod so yeah i'm very very excited to see where it goes anyway that will be it for this special feature as i pick up some amazing armor and uh yeah let me know actually if you want to see more of this i i don't know whether there's anything more to do with the exception of the sandbox gameplay. If you'd like me to continue this save, then uh, let me know otherwise as well. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.